Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am here for the next segment of my trope series. What I want to talk about today is multiple points of view, which is not specifically a trope in itself, but it is something that is very common in books. And it is something where I have a pretty definite opinion. When a book has more than four points of view, I find it very frustrating. And I have a hard time connecting with the characters in the book. My sweet spot is three points of view, I believe. I can do four. <laughs> Once you start adding more and more points of view, you lose me as a reader. There's too many people to keep track of. I'm not interested. That being said, there's always exceptions and um, books that work out for me. I guess I should say that you will find this happens more in fantasy, but especially in epic fantasy, you see this a lot. But I've seen it happening in science fiction as well. And I'd like to share the, mo the 10 most recent books that I've read that had more than four points of view and how I feel about them and how I think the author has done on this. My most recent read with more than four points of view is The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. This is a cozy science fiction, really focusing on characters and what uh, what it means to be part of a community and which communities we choose to be a part of. So this takes place on a basically it's like at a kind of like a convenience stop layover and an accident happens in space and so three people who have come down to to wait out their layover or to get gas for their ships what you know restock whatnot are now stranded with the owner and her child so we get five points of view in this story so this is the thing that makes it hard for me to get into Becky Chamber books from the beginning, or at least in the Wayfarer series, is the multiple points of view. Because each chapter is kind of like a vignette. And if you're not expecting that, it, for me, it bounces me off. I had to reread her first book in the Wayfarers in order to really appreciate what she was doing. And then that set me up for the rest. Um, book two does do it slightly different as it's an alternating uh, present past kind of thing but three and four very much more, she's back to the vignettes and telling an overall cohesive story but by using vignette chapter points of view it makes it a little bit slower to get going at least for me as a reader and I think she accomplished what she wanted to do at the end But if I had, did not already, hmm. but if I had not already decided I liked Becky Chambers' vignettes storytelling, I would have DNF'd it, to be honest, just because I don't typically like this sort of thing. She just happens to write it really well, and so she's an exception for me. And then, same thing with. Record of the Spaceborn Few, which I read the month before The Galaxy in the Ground Within. There are just so many characters going on. And then this one is more about home and what does home mean. And again, community. And not all of the point of views lined up. I felt like in this one, especially at the beginning, there was more like end of the chapter hooks to get you to turn that page. And then when you switch to another character, you're not getting the payoff for that hook because sometimes it, what happened is not addressed further down the line or at least not directly addressed because you might see a resolution from another character's point of view but it doesn't have the same emotional impact from the person who was ex you were experiencing it with before again this is one of my things with multiple points of view that I have a hard time connecting. But at the end of this book, I really 
enjoyed it. And I think probably on a reread, I'm going to enjoy it more because I already know what happens. For me, Becky Chambers is really great for rereading, but the first time reading the Wayfarer series books, I don't necessarily like them. And it's only the Wayfarer series books because other bo- other things I've read by her, she doesn't have this style. It's specific to this series. Next, I have The Consuming Fire by John Scalzi, and this is number two in his Interdependency series, where uh, the wormholes that connect planets are collapsing and changing, and or the new Emperox is, or Emperor. I've heard people say Emperox, and I've heard people say Emperor. I don't know. She's trying to tell and warn people and get people set up so that when they get cut off, from everyone else, they are going to be able to survive because in this society, many people have settled on worlds that or around worlds and planets that are not sustainable for life overall. I think Scalzi is able to get away with the multiple points of view in this book because even though there are different point of view characters, it's still pretty focused on a few. So you're getting longer chunks with these characters and then snippets in with other characters. And that is what makes it work for me. And also he follows through. This event is happening with this character to get the resolution. You get it with the same character. And I'm enjoying this series and I hope to finish it here soon. Then I have Jade City by Fonda Lee. Honestly, I almost DNF'd it because of the point of view characters, especially because we get, I don't know. It felt like we were getting the original three siblings and then all of a sudden we got Andy. And then there's the other guy who isn't family, but you see different points of view. The, the one who wants the jade and is jade addicted. It may, not only is a story a slow burn anyway, but the connection of these scenes didn't, I didn't feel the flow between the different character POVs. That hurt it for me and it took me a long time to get through this book. Everyone kept saying it was going to be worth it and so I was trusting them, which is why I was I continued reading. But if I had just been mood reading and had never heard about this book before, I would have put it down. Not that, and I'm not saying that Fonda Lee doesn't have interesting characters. It's just, it was too many point of view characters for me. Then I have A Desolation Called Peace, which is number two in our Katie Martin's duology. And I think that is why it worked for me, because it was number two. So we still had Mahit. And I believe the first book is primarily her and her point of view. And so now we get to see inside three seagrasses mind and we start to get to see other characters. And because I already felt connected to Mahit and now I'm like, Ooh, I get to see other people who she interacted with their brains. That is what made it work for me. So authors maybe just don't do your multiple point of views like a whole bunch in the first book because that's going to make me bounce off. Keep Maybe do that first point of view book smaller, get me invested, and then I'll just keep coming along with the ride for you to get more people. Next on this list, I have The Fires of Heaven, which I still have not finished. And yeah, part of it is the too many characters. I understand that they're all like doing things at the same time, but I think that companion novels would have worked better. Tell the story of what they're doing over here and then release this about this over here. And I will know that they're happening at the same time and then be fun to see the connections. Having it all happen in the same story is just getting overwhelming. And then you're adding more point of view characters. And from what I understand, it it doesn't get any better. There's, I'm having a hard time with this series. Have watched the first three episodes of the show and am enjoying how that is working out, even with all the changes that they're doing, which, I mean, you have to do changes when you do an adaptation from book to screen. I like what they're doing. 
so I'm probably going to finish the TV series and they're playing eight seasons of the series before I finish the 14 books. And it is at least 50% because of too many point of view characters. And then next on here, I have the long way to a small angry planet. I don't think I have as, I need to say as much. Um, I did bounce off of it the first time I tried to read it. Second time I pushed through because everybody, I was hearing such great things. And then I went back and read it a second time all the way through, and that's when I liked it. So for me, the series is much better upon rereads. Next, I have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Not all the points of view characters had equal time or had equal POV time. And it, it makes it seem even though they're supposed to be all avatars of different boroughs in New York, that certain boroughs are more important. It, it made it a little more chaotic. I got Manny very much fully fleshed out. Iceland, or Island, she was there. I, I see what Jemison was doing with her, just showing that from how she was raised, everything, her, everything, the point of view was very warped in the perception of it, which is why she allows the lady the white lady to manipulate her. We meet Brooklyn and she seems like she's going to be this force. And then she solves and is pulled back. Queens, I don't think we got a lot from her. And so that was kind of sad because they, when we are finally introduced to her, it's interesting, but I don't know. I did not connect with her the same way that you connect with Manny, but you spend more time in Manny's head. And I loved Bronca. I don't know what it is about her, but I, I enjoyed her, her point of view a lot. Again, she, her and Manny, I think, got more of the POV time. The, the POVs that I had time invested in really worked for me, but the other ones, when I read them, I'm just like, okay, it, they didn't have the same weight. And that is something that's hard to balance if you're trying to make, have all these point of view characters like equal in what they're doing is to give them the same weight in their time. And I don't think that that was done well in this book overall, even though overall I like the book. And then I have on here, The First Blade by Joe Abercrombie. So this book is very fascinating. It's very character driven, which I like, which allowed me to get more into the characters. And then like three quarters of the way through, we're given a, another point of view character. Okay. And then the first three um, scenes we see with this character is basically the character doing the same thing. There, there's no like progress or progression in her story being made. And that was kind of frustrating. In fact, I had recommended this book to my husband before I was done with it because I was enjoying it so much. And when he got to that part, he DNF'd the book because he was like, why am I being introduced to another character so late in the game? It's like, if she was really important, bring her in early, even if it's only like interlude chapters. That way we see that she's going to be folded in. I think Amber Crombie did better in the second book. But in this one, that was a big mess for me. So don't add major POV characters far into your book. And then finally on this book, I have Aurora Rising, which I really enjoyed. And this is a case where the authors, it's written by a, a dual team, they wanted each character on the team to have a POV chapter. They labeled their chapters with the uh, characters' names, that's fine. Again, it gets down to you have seven, I think you have seven points of your characters. There were a couple that I don't think that we quite got the full effect of their personality. I mean, again, when you have so many characters that you're doing, something I think that they did is they did try to have the, the point of view characters, it was their scene that you were having they were the ones like they, they needed to be the point of care 
point of view characters because they were the ones doing the scene. And I think that really helps. But I don't think it was a perfect execution. So overall, I don't like this. Not really a trope, but this habit that authors have of putting more than four point of view characters in books. I think it's very hard to balance more than four characters and give them equal weight of time unless you're going to focus on a few primary as the primary points of views and have some interlude chapters then it works but it all depends also on the author's writing how do you feel about books that have more than four povs do you like this do you not do you feel like some need to have more weight and then some not or some have you know just a chapter sprinkled in here or there please Leave your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like the video. Thank you and have a great day.